Okay, everything we've done so far has been, um, we've been looking at a situation that's been in electrostatic equilibrium, or, um, or an electric, if we have a, a, a situation where no charge is moving. And that's pretty boring, and it's not particularly, well, there's some applications for it. There are applications for it, but, um, you know, most of the, most of you, you, you folks that are going to go on and, you know, like study engineering or whatever, you're going to be dealing with stuff that has current flowing through it, right? That where electrons are flowing through wires and things are moving and happening. And, and so, well, at last, we're going to get to that. We're going to talk about current. Now, what is, uh, so we're going to define what current is. We'll come up with an expression for average and instantaneous current. And then we'll talk about a microscopic model. And then we're going to get, talk about drift velocity. A lot of people think that electrons and, and wires move at the speed of light, because you always hear the electricity moves at the speed of light. No! Well, OK, the electric field that makes current flow in a wire it moves at about the speed of light. But the electrons themselves that are moving in the wires, they creep along at a snail's pace. Yes. No, at a snail's pace. I mean, a snail could outrace the electrons in a wire. They could. They don't really move very fast at all. So we'll, we'll see that. OK, so here's um, how we define current. Current is the rate at which charge goes by. Okay, so it's just it's 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 the rate how much charge is going by every second. Okay, it's a rate, so it's related to time. So if you had some cross-sectional area, like in Portal. So I should, I should get some colored pencils and then I could really have fun with this. Huh? We should just play Portal. We should just play Portal. <laughs> Wrong. Okay. So here is a charge. And here's another charge. And here's another charge. And there's just a bunch of them, okay? And they are flowing through this area. And they come out the blue port. No, they don't. They're just going to go right on through it, OK? <laughs> port portal is a game. It's a fantasy. We don't know how to do that, that stuff yet. Yes. Maybe someday. So it, the, the, all these charges are flowing through, through this uh, cross-sectional area. And, and so we say, OK, in one second, how much charge will flow through that area? So this will have some area A. Um, and so we define current. Now we, we use current, we use the letter I for current, which is unfortunate because we use the letter I for rotational inertia. But that was last semester. Oh, and we use the letter I for impulse. Yeah, that's right, We for three things. Now if it's got a vector hat on it, it's impulse. Huh? Yeah, to OK, yeah, but this is physics. This is physics. We, we have no self here. OK, so um, now, so what we do is over a period of time, we measure how much charge goes by. We'll call that delta Q. Delta Q is the quantity of charge that flowed through there in some quantity of time, divided by some quantity of time. And so this is average current. And so if we look at the units, this is coulombs per second in the metric system. I don't know anybody who doesn't use this. I don't know if there even is another set of units. You know, we have inches and miles and furlongs per fortnight and stuff like that. But um, as far as I know, there's only coulombs and seconds and amps. This is called an amp. 
Well, it's called an ampere, but nobody calls it an ampere. They just call them amps. And we use the letter A to uh, represent. So if you see a capital A or a metric prefix in front of a capital A, those are, those are amps. Capital A as a variable is usually area, but as a unit, it means amps. Okay, so when you uh, ro uh, robotics folks are talking about 130 amps or something when with Doc 7, right? It, we had, uh, okay, what that means is that 130 coulombs of charge flowed through the wire every second, which is actually quite a lot. Now, one th thing to keep in mind is that even as these charges are flowing, remember that in a wire or in a in, in, in a solution or whatever. Basically, we're dealing with systems that are electrically neutral. It's like, let's say you had five amps. That's five coulombs per second. You, you haven't isolated five coulombs of charge from five coulombs of negative charge. You're not isolated charge. If you did, you would have real serious problems with that much charge isolated. Because that you would have lightning bolts, you know, and, and Thor from the sky would be throwing <laughs> I, I don't know, it would be a disaster. Um, be, but wires are electrically neutral. You got just as much positive and negative charge. It's just that, you know, what have we got in a wire? We got, you know, charges that can flow in a wire. Um, now, at a microscopic level, um, what we have are, and let's take a look. Oh, and then this is. I'm sorry, this is uh, average current, and of course, to change it to instantaneous current, we just make this a, take the limit of this and as delta T approaches zero, and you just get dQ dt. Now, notice that a quantity of charge is a scalar, time is a scalar, so current is actually a scalar, even though it kind of has a direction to it, you know, like current will flow through a wire, um, well, we'll get to that in a little bit, but current itself is a scalar. Now let's take a look at a little chunk of wire here. Thank you. Let's put it right there. Well, um, what we've got are, um, we're going to pretend that it's little positive charge carriers. Because by the way, current is defined by the flow of positive charge. Now, this is unfortunate. Um, all this was defined before scientists really knew what the heck was going on. Um, and they thought, they just thought, oh, it's, you know, positive charge is flowing. Well, it didn't, it turned out that what carries the negative charge is what was flowing, but there was no way they could tell that at the time, you know, in the, in the late 1800s when they were doing these first experiments. What, you know, Benjamin Franklin assigned the charge is, you know, positive and negative to, uh, you know, to static electricity experiments, you know, back in the 1700s. And we kept, we've kept that convention. It's too bad he, he guessed wrong. Um, it's too bad he didn't assign the negative charge to protons and the positive charge to what turned out to be electrons because it would make this a little simpler. Let's take a look at a wire and pretend that it's po this is why it's more complicated. We have to pretend that it's flowing positive charge in a wire. Now it's actually um, electrons moving to the left, but I'm going to pretend that it's protons, you know, drifting to the right or positively charged electron. I don't know. And what these guys do is is they have an average velocity, don't they, moving through here? Well, these little arrows represent their average velocity. When we talk about resistance, we'll see that it's not so, they don't just move slowly like that. They bash into things. and But they're going to drift here. And so we're going to call this average velocity of these moving charged particles V sub D. And this is called the drift velocity. It's kind of the average velocity of each charge carrier. So it's the average average velocity? 
No, it's just the average velocity of the charges in there. Yes. <laughs> okay. Now, let's say that. Let's say no, no. I'm moving on. You guys are being silly. It was a serious question. No, it's not. All right. So they're just move. Let let they're just marching to the right like ants at a constant velocity. We're calling the drift velocity to the right. Let's just say they're moving with a constant velocity to the right. Okay. So it's the average of all of them, not over time. Yes. Sure. Okay. So let's take a look at this guy. Let's say that this delta, they're going to move through some delta x from here to here. I'm going to take a cross, arbitrary cross section here and an arbitrary cross section here. And I'm going to say that this little guy is going to move from here to here in a certain amount of time. Okay, well, how much, let's figure out what delta Q is. How much charge is in there? Well, here we've got a volume of space, right? And the volume of space, um, uh, we're going, well, to figure out how, much, how many charges are in here, one, two, three, four, five, six, well, I can count them. Or I can say, well, I need some measure of how many charge carriers there are per unit volume. And you can get this for like copper. There's so many charge carriers per unit volume in carp copper. We'll call that N. And this is the charge carriers per unit volume. That's what N is. Like you've got 12 charge carriers per cubic meter. Okay, that'd be ridiculous, but um, we'll just, that's just kind of what it means. All right, uh, then, well, how much volume do we have in here? Well, this has some cross section, we'll call that A. So A times delta X, that's my volume. Okay. Oh, and then, now this tells me how many charge carriers, but I also need, I, and I forgot to do this, how much charge is on each charge carrier? Does the charge carrier, is it's almost always electrons, but it could be ions with a certain charge that's flowing like in an aqueous solution or something. You could have currents in a solution that it's moving, but so we'll multiply that, we'll call this Q. Q is the charge on each carrier. Am I off camera? Almost. Okay. Well, then what do I ne need to do? Well, I need to... Uh, well, th this tells me how much charge is in here. Okay? And this little volume goes from here to here. Yeah. All right. Now, what I want to do now to figure out the current is to divide this by the time it takes to go from here to here. Okay, so we're going to uh, go N, uh, I'll put N times Q, I should put the Q with the N here, A delta X over delta T, right, because current is charge divided by time. So here's how much charge is contained in here, here's how much time it takes for that charge to go from here to here, delta X, and notice what we got here, delta X over delta T. Well, that's my average velocity. That's the average velocity of the charges that are moving in that in this uh, in this volume. So this gives me an equation for current in terms of n, in terms of the number of charge carriers per unit volume, the charge on each carrier, the cross-sectional area, and delta x over delta t is the drift velocity. And you can use this equation to solve uh, problems. And, um, you know, we'll work an example problem here in a, in a minute. But 
uh, hey, this drip velocity turns out to be pretty slow when you look at different you know applications and so on. Oh, by the way, um, the hardest part of doing this is figuring out N, the number of charge carriers per unit volume. Because you have to remember all that stuff from chemistry, like moles and grams per mole, and and how many you know charge carriers there are per atom, and all that. So I'll show you a problem where you have to do that here in a minute. But this is current.